Data pad, data tabs, protocol buffer is now reset. We will talk and to people visit the local local sites. Something about the young elves behind the counter makes you br your breath catch in your chest. She's lovely to look at, but it's strange kind of beauty. Her eyes are large and luminous and impossibly green. As she looks up at you, you can see that her irises are flecked with in iridescent goal. Hello, and welcome to Algernon's. Perhaps I can help you with something. As she smiles at you, her eyes fixed on yours. A curious feeling of weightlessness fills your chest. It feels as though you are floating in a warm, calm sea. A gentle current pulls you closer to absinthe, and the sensation is pleasant. As you drift, the golden specks in her eyes begin to move. Look deeper in her eyes. Golden specks in the elf's eyes shift and swirl, slowly picking up speed. It's mesmerizing. All at once, the specks explode in the light and color. Absinthe's eyes now fill your field of vision, and it feels as if you are drowning in an alien sea. Patterns traced by the shimmering specks in her eyes are kaleidoscopic, enchanting and nearly impossible to turn away from. Lose yourself. You are lost. Your entire world has been reduced to a churning vortex of green and gold. Simply, you become aware that something is happening. You feel your body being buffeted by unseen forces. Suddenly, everything goes black. Slowly and painfully, you struggle your way back to consciousness. The shop's owner, Algernon, is looking down on you, an expression of concern on his face. Absinthe stands beside him, her expression one of embarrassment. Welcome back, friend. Algernon extends a hand to help you to your feet. Absinthe shifts slightly to allow you to stand. What? What was that? What happened? My fault, my and uh, my apologies. Sometimes when I daydream, I bring others along for the ride. It was unintentional, yes, but there was no harm done, correct? You'll be fine. No harm done. Uh, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to go stand in the corner for a while. Hmm. Greetings, human. The elf's voice is smooth as silk and rich as clotted cream. Something about him instantly puts you at ease. I'm Algernon Half Dream, an owner of this establishment. In my shop, you will find only the finest in magical paraphernalia. Paraphernalia. Para 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 hmm. Now tell me, how may I serve you? Um, can I ask you a question? You are in luck. I have a great many answers. What's the deal with your assistant? There's something funny about her eyes. Absinthe is a friend, nothing more. She helps out around the shop when the fancy strikes her. She is nobody's assistant and I'm no one's master. But her eyes? He pauses for a moment, considering. I believe that they suit her personality. Now, anything else you need to know? Hmm. What kind of magic do you practice? Personally? The true kind. But I sell goods tailored to all traditions. In my shop, we do not discriminate. Hmm. Okay, what's your story? Have you been in there? Kraus Bazaar Long. I have many stories. Stories of dancing spirits, of raging dragons, of unchecked magic and swarming chaos. All of these stories are true. As for the Kraus Bazaar, I have always been here, quietly peddling my wares. It is a simple lie, but a good one. Okay, what are you selling? 
I have nothing. I mean, uh, no, no real solid understanding of how the magic system works. I know how the mechanics sort of work, but I, I don't know how, for example, you sh what kind of character should you build, what kind of abilities you should go after. Absinthe keeps her eyes hidden from you. Please excuse me, I work to. So this shop probably has very little use to us. A pair of round eyes peer at you from under the hood of a grime smeared winter coat. You recognize him as David, one of the Crowds Bazaar street kids. If you had to guess, you'd place him in his mid-teens, though it's difficult to tell beneath the grime and acne mar marring his face. You've seen him following Monica around between runs, chasing her heel like a lost puppy. She always seemed to have a soft spot for the kid. Oh hoy, Aunt May. Have you seen Monica around? I've been looking her all over. Leah, looking all over for her. Mm. Okay, I'm afraid I have some bad news for you, kid. Kid blinks a blank expression on his face. He's dead, isn't she? Yeah, I'm sorry, kid. We all are. Yeah, look, I... I think I want to be alone right now. What is this? Tip the dancer. Sure, it has to be go cold in this weather in that outfit. The Moritz plots. What is this? U Bond Blackboard. Yeah, nothing here for us at the moment. The Romani Patriarch is an impressive figure, an enormous man in his late sixties, burly and broad chested despite his age. His voice is deep and resonant, and his breath is heavy with the stench of pipe tobacco. De Aven Baxale. You're here to conduct some business? If so, welcome. Well, I welcome you to Met Bach Arms and Ammunition. If not, keep right on walking. Hmm. I'm here to buy. Can you tell me about your inventory? There are weapons from all across Europe Aris, Jessica, Pichetti, you name it. If it can be found on the continent, it can be acquired by Methback Arms. Hmm. No, this doesn't. This doesn't really tell me all that much because I haven't paid attention to anything, any of this. No, not a weapon user, really. Ooh. Smart Link Sniper Rifle. Grenade Launcher. Uh, well, definitely seems to be new weaponry available. Secure Tech Armored Clothing. Okay, what's our armor? I can't see. Uh, it's sort of hard to. 
make a purchasing choice when you don't even know what your own armor is. Secure clothing, that's worthless. But armor is not our thing. Checking drones, that sort of thing. We just can't afford to buy everything at the moment. A dick is something we need immediately. This elf is clearly has cl this elf has clearly seen better days. His skin is weathered and emaciated, as though it has been stretched too tightly over his frame. Track marks lie in the crooks of his arms, and dirty bandages wrap his knuckles. Despite all of this, he seems cheerful enough. Elf fixes his twinkling, bugged out eyes to on yours and offers you a broad smile, displaying a set of impossibly white teeth. When he speaks to you, his voice is surprisingly deep. Guten Tag, meine Freundin. You here for some magic because Zack Flack. He gestures at himself with a dramatic flourish. Is your magic man? Hmm. Street mage? Zack lets out a throaty barking laugh. Street mage? Me? Do I look like a street mage to you? He shakes his hand. <laughs> she he shakes his head, but his smile doesn't waver. He fish he fishes a small bag of pills out of his bag back pocket dangles it before your eyes. No, Chamor, I'm not a street mage. I've got the magic in my blood, and the magic in these bags, but you won't catch old Zack studying in his spell books. Well, in that case, let's talk about the magic you've got in the back there. What have you, what have you got? Oh, a little bit of everything. I've got your Zen and your Hyper, your Nitro and your Nova, co Nova Coke. If you want it, I've got it. Zack leans towards you and lowers his voice to a conspiratorial whisper. I've even got a special concoction of my own design. I wouldn't recommend it unless you're serious about getting high. So, you wanna conduct a little business? Twit the bandages. Zack snorts out a short burst of laughter. He waggles his bandaged hand in front of you. Oh, these? Nothing much, Chummer. Nothing much. Sussled with a spirit back in Amsterdam, you know. The elves are very spiritual people. You fought a spirit with your bare hands. Did I say fought? Jack winks at you, his, his smile twisting up into a licentious smirk. You can't help noticing that his eyelashes appear to be dusted with glitter. Nah, Chamar. Fuck. Zack Flash is a lover, not a fighter. We partied, then we tussled. Hard not to get bandaged up under the circumstances. Ah, uh, yeah, what was that you were saying about elves? Elves, you know, my people, are creatures of the spirit. We've got the magic in our blood, whether we sling spells or not. I'm telling you, I talk with spirits all my life, and it has nothing to do with praying, subtle them, or studying spell books. Flash lowers his voice to a conspiratorial whisper. Between you and me, my mojo is stronger than any cog wage mages. Take those da take those rat scum bastards at as technology. They cast spells all day and all night, right? Fire this and lighting that, just tossing them around like candy. Right. Well, me, I'm just doing my thing, not casting spells. I'm storing up my energy, saving it. Can you imagine how much magic I have? Hmm. Yeah, I don't think that's. I don't think that's how it works, Zack. Trust me, friend. I have secret knowledge. He slowly turns his head to the side and gives you a good look at his upturning ears. Like I said, 
It's in the blood. Okay, let's do business. Okay, tell me about your special concoction. Clashes green broadens even further. His mouth is disturbingly bare. <laughs> Jesus Christ, what's wrong with me? Yeah. Flash greens broadens even further. His mouth is disturbingly large, and there is something menacing about the sight of those two white teeth. This is the real deal, Chummer. Propriety blend designed and delivered by yours truly. For Pharmaceutical grade kamikaze cut with genuine spirit residue from the chur, then mixed with my secret blend of herbs and spices. He produces a small packet filled with iridescent purple granules from the pocket of his dirty jeans. You wanna get high, buy some Nova Coke, and throw yourself a party. But if you wanna soar, you get yourself some flash. So, you wanna go and take some? Yeah, let's see what you got. There's definitely something odd about that. Jesus Christ. Movement plus two. I mean, plus two movement plus two action points for one round. Ooh. It's insanely expensive. You had, again, a few options if you had a, a different set of skills might have noticed something. Okay, one data tap remaining. Triar Cyber Clinic. As you approach the elf, you notice that he is in mid-conversation. He sleeps more rapidly and his voice comes out in a low, quiet tone. A glossy plastic shell of a high-grade comlink leans on his wrist. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so I'm listening in. Doing your best look uninterested, you lean in slightly and strain your ears. You find that you can make out the doctor's end of the conversation. No. No, the price I, I'm quoting you is more than fair. Well, below market value, in fact. If you can't pay it, that's your problem. Yes, I know that's the, that the price has gone up. That is some seller's market. Well, then you'll just have to find the money or go without. I'm sorry, but I have to go. I have, patient. I have a patient. He presses a button on his comlink and looks up at you, a million dollar smile on his face. Sorry about the wait, my friend. Welcome to Triage Cyberclinic. He extends his hand to you. I'm Dr. Zabin Eskibel. Your name is? Shaking his hand. Aunt May. A pleasure. Pleased to meet you, Aunt May. What can I do for you today? Uh, cyberware. Ooh, don't we have a data check? Yes, we do. Mm, very basic. Very basic implants. Again, uh, not not really worth bothering. Not a fan of this. Go for the medical supplies. Do we have anything? Okay, we have trauma kits. And a basic med kit, simple drone repair kit. Um, I, I think we'll go more or less. Huh. 
phone rings. A bizarre monument towers before you. At the top of the pedestal, a form of an angel stands, its outstretched wings looming over the small park. But the material is strange and uneven, giving the statue a cold Frankenstein esque appearance. It appears that the artist has welded this monument together from various metal scraps and pieces of junk. As you approach, a small grimy monitor at the base of the statue flickers dimly to life. The grainy face of a smug young orc appears on the screen. Hello there, I'm Herbert Kanzel, creator of this monument. What would you like to know? A statue name. This is my tribute to victory, the victory of anarchy. It is both a citation and parody of the statue we destroyed some 20 years ago. You may remember it from the history trias as the... Yeah, German name? Yeah, Goldelse. Goldelse. Okay, installation history. I am the visionary Herbert Kanzel from the Lindwurma. You might know me from... Okay, well, there isn't much you know, I'm known for yet. But I intend to change that. All artists born from misery, after all. Installation history. Ah. Pressing the wrong buttons. Isn't it obvious? The sea is all a monument to the hubris of the Pr Prussian state. It's blown to bits. So someone takes a lot of bits and builds a monument to the hubris of anarchy. I mean... What more is there to say? As you are resetting the data tab, you notice that someone has duct taped a small foam made receiver to the system. An earplug dangles on the receiver. You put the earplug in your ear. The sound of heavy machinery makes it difficult to hear the words that are being spoken. After a moment, you find you can make out two distinct voices, a nasal woman who sounds like a heavy smoker, and a man who speaks in a high-pitched, breathy tone. Just heard, Monica, need to verify. Good for us. A sound like a conveyor belt starting as the noise of machinery. And you can't make out anything else until it comes to a stop a minute later. Think our next step? Nasal woman. Wait, isn't ready to make a move yet. Be patient. See who steps up. Could be someone more... More conveyor belts start, uh, start up. All you can hear is the sound of machinery. Yeah, some sort of motorized vehicle starts up drowning out everything else. You hear the sound of doors slamming shut and the noise of machinery suddenly muffled. There's a rattle of plastic and the ringing stops. Nasal woman's voice can be heard again in a sing-song tone. Good talk, how may I help you? Silence. Her tone changes, becomes more business-like. I heard. Yes, he knows. I told him it wasn't time to make a move yet. What do you think I am, an idiot? The council needs to meet again. I know, getting everyone in the same room is challenging. Getting them to agree on a course of action is going to be even more, ch over more challenging. From my perspective, the Kraus Bazaar was only stable because of her. If she really is out of the way, well, we'll see, won't we? Yeah, I know, I know. What can I say? Things go slow in the flux sometimes. You hear the sound of door opening again, and the cacophony of machinery feels the line. Can't make out anything, anything anymore. Hmm, coolly discussing the situation here. The ringing phone. It's an old, obsolete phone booth. It's ringing. Pick up the receiver. A monotone, pitched, adjusted voice begins speaking almost immediately. The shock volume writer's contact for this 
Keys is no more. Aunt May is listed as a follow-up contact. This is our only secured line to these keys. Please listen to the following instructions carefully if you are a supporter of our cause. We have phone booths in strategic locations throughout the city. Within each one, you may find a request posted for specific information. If you can obtain a copy of this information, return here and submit it via the port below the receiver. We will verify the authenticity of the information remotely and post an undoctored copy of it in onto the matrix ourselves. It is our stated goal for this information to remain free to all. However, you will be compensated for sought after information returned to this location. Oh, can I get up? Get up there. It's an old obsolete phone. Uh, no. The ring apparently stopped long ago. Anyway, our little quest is done. Cine. Warning her warming herself in the dim light of a dying street lamp is a wave of a girl who looks far too warm for her years. The clothes she wears suggest the oldest profession and the fog in her eyes suggests a habit that demands such a lot of work. The mother superior, she says there will be seven for me to care for. I need to see them. Seven what? What do you have to care for? Captain's children! Mother superior says there are seven. She says I'm to be the governess of the children. You know this are ch cheap jack cheap jack poking out beneath the young woman's unruly hair. Vacant look look in her eyes marks her as a likely BTL junkie, lost between reality and any number of better than life virtual constructs. I need money to get back back to them. Ah, uh, do you know Monica? Monica? She one of the sisters at the Abbey. No wait, Monica. Figure of recognition fights through the haze in the young woman's eyes. Yes, Monica. She's good to me. Brings me food to eat and tea to drink. Hmm. Yeah, something happened to her. Despite the woman's persistent delirium, she seems to glean meaning from your tone. She died. Yeah, while working a job, yeah. The girl grips her head with claw-like hands, tugging at her hair as if she might pull her brain out through her skull. I don't like this. I can't switch it off. The girl's frail body shudders and her eyes grow large. She does not sob. Instead, she smiles a sad smile, which looks to have been worn all too often. He will go to heaven, she told me. There's a place for good people, stillborn babies and childhood pets. And she was a good person. The girl then begins to mumble to herself while fingering the hair that covers the jack in her head. Yeah, this story sounds familiar. Captain Von Trapp is very well known and respected. The poor dear lost his wife and the children their mother. A child should not be without a mother. And a mother should not be without a child. Have you have you seen the captain? Yeah, I'm going to step away now. Yes, good. I need to rejoin the children. Junkies, junkies everywhere. La Zack Flash. Yeah. yeah, I think we basically explored most of the places. Before you stands a troll, though it is a stretch to say he is standing at all, his great mass is barely held upright by the two vintage prosthetic legs, along with a crutch under one arm. His body clicks and hums every, with every shift of his weight. 
Despite these disabilities, his eyes are sharp and calculating. I know you. Hmm. I haven't been here long. You to the Grouse Bazaar then. Heard Monica had some fresh meat in her stable. Hmm. I'm Aunt May, by the way. Good to meet you, Aunt May. Name's Alexi Lane. So, what's your place in the Kraus Bazaar? No place, really. Just an old relic thrusting away. Hmm. Let's tell him about Monica, too. Something happened to her on the run? Uh, you know something about it? Just that what my eyes and ears tell me. I had a feeling, besides. Monica almost always comes around after a run to check on everybody. She's long overdue and now here you are in her place. So she's either severely wounded or outright dead. She's it. Hmm. I'm afraid she's gone. The grizzled droll nods grimly. The servers in his prosthetic prosthetics complain as he lets loose a heavy sigh. Well, oh, that is a shame. She was a hell of a runner, that one. And a good friend. Okay, I think we're going to go into the shop, coffee shop, and finish up the mission. The information we came for in the first place. The man behind the counter has the broad smile and open demeanor of a classic Turkish street vendor. Welcome, honored Effendim. Welcome. How can Burak Ghazi serve you today? You would like a cup of coffee, perhaps? I've finished your little trifle, Herr Burak Ghazi. Ah, very good. I assume you had no difficulties. Difficulties, no. One of the tabs had been modified a bit though. Someone was using it to, as a surveillance device. He laughs. Of course they were. I would be surprised if they weren't. This is building after all. The flux everyone spies. If you do not spy, how will you know who is in power and who will be in power next? If you are to stay here, Ependim, you must get used to it. Who enters the Turkish bath will sweat. That's my uncle. Tadamer always says. And nevertheless, I shall have one of my people look into it. Wait, there's more. I listened in on the tab and I heard something might be important. He eyes you closely, amused. Oh, tell me, O oh listener of keyholes. What did you hear on the surveillance tab you found? I couldn't make out much. A nasal woman and a high pitched man. They seemed pleased Monica was uh, out of the picture. The Turk's face falls. News travels fast in Berlin. Those two are known to me. Is there more? The woman got a call. She talked about a council meeting tonight to decide if they should make a move. Then she was drowned out by heavy machinery. He nods grimly. Most excellent. It is indeed fortuitous that you discovered this information, though it is not unexpected. I will have one of my people attend this council meeting and report back. Yeah, I'm very interested in this, so let me know what happens. With that out of the way, let us return to our pressing business. He barks a stream of rapid-fire Turkish, and the gum-chewing young woman comes hurrying out of the, out of the counter. The menu for her Amsel, uncle? Kami hands you a folded piece of paper inside his uh, memory stick. Please extend my consolations to him. The death of Fräulein Schaufer. Fräulein Schaefer must have hit him hard. Uragazi gives Kami a small nod and she hurries out of the room. If she is gone, he returns his attention to you. Please express my condolences as well. I only just heard the news. 
Nika was an important part of this community. He frowns. Do you know how important? The memory stick Kami just handed you should contain all the information her Amsel requires from our chef in the PL. Should you require my services in the future, you know where to find me. Until then, goodbye. Mm. What was the mission? Take the memory stick to Amsel. Yeah. Simple enough. I guess we'll have to plan what we're going to do next. Are they even going to accept me as the group leader? Who knows? I, I don't really care if I'm the leader or not. Everyone can make their own choices as far as I'm concerned. Me. Hamsel peers at you through a battered pair of wire to your rent classes. His eyes are bloodshot, his expression grim. Did you get the information about Green Winters? Yes, I spoke with Altag. He gave me this memory to stick. Let us see what his agent has to say. Hamsel snatches the memory stick from your hand and slots it in his computer terminal. He navigates a series of command line menus and a wall of amber text floods the screen. Amsel scans it, mouthing the words as his eyes flip back and flip, flip back and forth. Bragasi's agent tailed Green Winters to a hotel in a cesspool of a keys called Dragon Keeper. Dragon Keeper. The hotel is called Das Ka Kessel House. It is a renovated factory nestled deep in the heart of the Drogen Kitab. It appears that Winters is holed up is holed up there. Recently there was some contention between two gangs over control of this neighborhood. Due to the gang violence, the agent refused to follow Winters inside of the health hotel, but he confirms that he is still inside. Well, what are we waiting for? Iger slings her rifle over her shoulder with a single spare motion. Gear up, people. We have a hotel to raid. Florian and Dietrich pause, exchange look with Paul. Just a moment, Iger. Amsel rises to his chair, drawing himself to full height. Even so, he has to crane his neck to look her in the eye. You are an excellent soldier and nobody questions your competence in the field. Your loyalty to this team is equally commendable. That said, we believe that Aunt May is the right choice to lead the team. There's a long pause before Iger speaks. When she does, her voice comes out dull and flat. What? Don't mistake this decision as a reprimand. Monica considered your contribu contributions to the team to be invaluable. But we all know what she that she wasn't comfortable putting a soldier in charge. Agar speaks through clenched teeth, her words are measured, but her expression is livid. This is unbelievable. You want to put a rookie put the rookie in charge again. She shakes her head. Don't you people learn from your mistakes? Aunt May is the reason we're still alive, I Iger. She kept us together. She let us out of there in one piece. Making her your number one girl. He sounds tired, resigned, but above all, disappointed. This is more of your flax state idiocy at work, isn't it? Dietrich reaches out, puts his hand on her shoulders. It's what Monica believed in. My girl's voice tightens for a moment. Her control sleeps and her face controls in grief. Yeah, look where that got her. Iker straightens to her full height. Let me give you a piece of advice. In the field, only two things matter. The mission and survival. Everything else is a distraction. Your ridiculous politics have no place in a, on a shadow run. Beatrix manages a smile. 
What can I say? We're German. We have a history of strong political views. Iger sighs, and the tone of resignation returns to her voice. Ah, screw it. Let's put an end to this. I've got the skill and experience to lead this team. Aunt May, on the other hand, was appointed by Monica as a joke. If you'd rather take, rather she take the lead, I'll, bu I'll bide by that. I want to hear e each of you say it. You already have, you just weren't listening. Hmm. I have no quarrel with you, Iger. I'll do as the group wishes. You stay out of this. She stabs an armored finger into your chest hard. The moment she raises her hand to you, Dante's ears lay back and she lets out a low growl. Reflexively, she takes a half step back. I think we've heard. I, I think we've heard what Dante has to say. As for my part, Aunt May saved our lives back there. You may not believe it, she did. The way I see it, that means I follow her lead a while longer. Glory's voice is uncharacteristically gentle. I trust in Monica's judgment, therefore I trust in Aunt May's judgment. The discussion is finished, either. Amsel speaks softly, but his tone is firm. Aunt May will take Monica's place as the leader of this team. I just want to antagonize Iger more than I maybe she already has been. Um, but I don't I'm also sick sick of her bullshit. I'm not too big on vengeance. That oh very often uh, um, swearing vengeance and setting up in that path leads to probably you making choices you otherwise wouldn't make and probably aren't sensible to make. Okay, I can be a very businesslike, try to keep Monica's legacy alive. Say, okay. Say the situation is cheap, is shit, but we're we'll make it through, or demand Monica's vengeance, mo vengeance from for Monica. Okay, I'll go with the we're in over our heads. Whatever we stumbled into tonight, I'll see us through it. Glory and Dietrich not in agreement. Dante nudges your leg with his head. All right, fine. She shakes her head in exasperation. Her voice is heavy with defeat. Looks like the rookie's in charge again. Yeah, time to move on. We need to focus on chasing down green winters. Indeed. I've transferred the information that we received from Altuk to the computer terminal in the next room. It used to be Monica's personal workstation, Aunt May. Now it's yours. Monica kept a variety of notes and dossiers on that machine. I would suggest, suggest reviewing her notes when you have the time. Amsel turns his attention away from you and back to his computer screen. With hunting, I will eagerly wait your return. I wouldn't suggest driving to drug, drug and Kip. The roads aren't safe. I think the u bahn would be safe faster anyway. 
Yeah, thanks for the tip to you, Bon. It is. I grimaced and turns to check her equipment. The rest of the group disperses in turn. Okay, you now command a team of Shadowrunners. In traveling to new mission locations, you will be able to choose which members of your team to bring and modify your loadout for the run. When members of your team become permanently incapacitated on a mission, they'll automatically they'll be automatically extracted for emergency medical care. They will be patched up and ready for action the next time they turn to the safe house. Avoid this loss of firepower by always carrying some Boo Mona trauma kits into the field. These can be purchased at Street Dog's office in the Kraus Bazaar. Uh, I, I do like this approach a bit better. I mean, having a team that move travels with you. Because if you always have to just hire, you will never really get to know them. They're just. They're just an. They might have been a goddamn drone at that point. What is this? Dash. We could get more healing items, I suppose. We have that one crappy healer, and that's not gonna last long. Okay. Your workstation and mission computer, the command center for your team's operations, and your last link to the memory of Monica Schaefer. Her thoughts and words live on in the machine. At times, it's easy to forget that she's gone. The cool blue tones of the workstation's main menu fill the screen. A blinking message in the upper right corner notifies you that you have zero unread messages. Okay, new messages. Read old messages. The screen flickers to life and Monica's face appears. Her hands are on her hips and she's wearing a wry smile. Hey Ace, if you're reading this, it means that I've either died or stepped down. Hopefully the latter, but probably the former. Not many Shadowrunners make it to their make it to retirement age. In any case, I'm sure that you'll do a fine job in the role. If you need anything, talk to Paul. He's a good man, and he knows how important it is to me that you take my place. One last thing, Ace. Iger might cause you some problems. In fact, I think it's a fair bet that she's already has. Just remember, she brings something to this team that nobody else does. You'll want her on your side. My advice to you is this. Hold your own with her. If she pushes you, push back. Don't try to butter her up with flattery. She'll see right through it. Most of all, do what you can to earn her respect. She'll never be satisfied following you if you don't give her a better reason to than because Monica said so. I have faith in you, Ace. It's up to you to justify that faith. She half turns away from the camera, then returns her attention to you. The image is uncannily lifelike. Oh, and by the way, Ace, if you bart this, I'm coming back and haunting your ass. I mean that. Message ends and the image fades. You find yourself back at your inbox. Ah, open jobs. Name. Okay, review notes on completed jobs. Nothing. Pending or active jobs. Nothing. Shadowland BBS Shadowland connection established successfully Okay, welcome to Shadowland Post pay data for sale Attach data to escrow account. Data will be automatically sold to the highest bidder. Both parties will remain anonymous throughout the transaction Okay, post anti antiquities delivery schedule Posting successful. Posting will remain active for two days. Okay, that's nice. It doesn't immediately. You don't get the payday, but probably before before the next mission comes, or we come back from the next mission. 
there's a result of that. Did someone even bother buying it? And what's the price? Keywords. Who is Blots? I think that's the name. I'm still recovering the logs. This hot dugger just trashed my land treat hosting server. Sounds like some kid pissed over his cartoons getting cancelled. Let a bunch of garbage files all over my discs and I'll be cleaning them up all day. They should make you pass a dumb dumbass this before you are allowed to take in this sun. Yeah, step up your security. Write some white IC programs if you can. At least make the kid's hair stand on end for a few hours next time he tries it. Just make sure that your IC is quick. Heavy hitting IC is no good if you if, if it can't catch up with an intruder. A fact that I take advantage on on a regular basis. Always running, eh? Like clockwork. If you two are finished, I did have IC on the thing. Track the hole down. Grocery store across the street was piggybacking on my land and they left an unsecured jackpot point in a bathroom stall. Old as hell maintenance jack in a fuse box and my security ignored it. Mystery solved. Shadowland isn't your personal tech support board, Lumens. Okay, glad to see you fix your problem. Only way you're going to learn. Okay, another threat. Killer in Seattle. Anyone else reading about this? City's got a Lone Star contract. Contract. They can't catch the guy. This Emerald City Ripper has been on a spree, and so far no one has a clue. Pathetic. If something like that happened on my block, some vigilantes would have tracked him down and stopped him. Shows how good state pay payroll cops are. Okay, this for was for Maelstrom. I'm guessing I'll read the names because they might become important at some point. Tolstoy, who says it's the it's a he? They don't have a, have any leads. Pro shot. Ha! I'll be in Seattle next week. If if WD any info, yeah, forward any info info you have about this Ripper, and I'll see about taking him out for a date with my Walter MA two thousand one hundred. I'm sure Lone Star will have a fat reward waiting for whoever blasts he, this goon. Anything else? Monica's team personnel files. Okay. Monica's entry on Amsel. The image of Monica appears on the screen. Paul. A talented and well-connected fixer with contacts all over Berlin. She pauses for a moment. He's more to me than that, of course, but that's neither here nor there. The image winks back off, off, off the screen. You find yourself back in the menu. Okay. Dietrich. The image of Monica winks onto the screen. Dietrich, one of my dearest friends and a shaman of tremendous power. Good man to have at your side in a fight. I tend to use Dietrich as a support in a support role. His magic can dramatically bolster the combat effectiveness of a frontline fighter like Iger or Glory. But when the chips are down, he's more than capable of dishing out punishment on his own. Can't think of much else to say about Dietrich. Just a good, reliable guy. She pauses for a moment. We when she speaks again. You can hear a hint of guilt in her voice. He's getting a little long in the tooth for our Shadowrunner. I'm not sure how many more years he has ahead of him in this game. But I'll be happy to run with him for as long as he's able. We'll see, I suppose. Hmm, Lori. Lori. Our dam damage enigma. I've known her for almost five years now, but I don't think that I've ever really know her. Somehow, I doubt that anyone will. On an operational level, Glory is solid. That chrome of hers may be old, 
but it gets the job done. I've seen her take a troll apart with her hand razors, and when her and when her adrenal pump is running, she moves faster than anyone I've ever seen. On top of all that, Glory is a competent field medic. I don't know where she learned medicine. It's another question mark. She's patch up, patched me up at least a dozen times. Between her skill with a medkit and Dietrich's magic, we haven't had much trouble with serious injuries, and in our line of work, that's a luxury. That's really all that I know about Glory. She keeps herself, barely talks, and spends most of her off time staring at nothing. I've seen this kind of behavior before, of course. Something bad happened in her past, deep down. I think she is still running from it, and I'm sure that her cyberware ties into it somehow. I don't know, maybe someday she'll open up to me. I'd like to think that she will see us, I suppose. Well, if she didn't open up in the five years, I doubt she waiting will make anything happen. So we might want to hmm, put some pressure on Glory. Okay, Iger. What to say about Iger? She's smart, she's strong, and she's one hell of a soldier. In a close-up fight, I've seen her take apart an entire security team with her shotgun, and she's even more dangerous at range. It's a handy thing having a trained soldier, having a trained sniper on the team. All in all, we enjoy one hell of an advantage thanks to her. Unfortunately, there are some disadvantages too. All of that military training has left her, how to say it, rigid I suppose. Unlike the others, Iger isn't content to go with the flow. She wants lists and maps and timetables. She wants a hi hierarchy and she wants it formalized. I don't think that she realizes it, but giving her what she wants would destroy this team. Lori and Dietrich would put up with it for more than wouldn't put up with it more than a day or two. I know that I wouldn't. But she keeps on pushing all the same. Yeah, Monica shakes her head. One of these days, the situation is going to come to a head. Just hope that it doesn't happen soon. Okay, what about my file? Aunt May, my secret weapon. I've run enough with Aunt May to know that she's trustworthy, put in a fight too, but beyond all of that, it's good to just see her again. There aren't many people left from the old old days, far too few, and Aunt May? She smiles. Well, she was always the best of them. She takes a deep breath and shakes her head with a sigh. God, that was sappy. Mental note. We record this before Aunt May gets a chance to see it. At any rate, anything happens to me, it's good to know that she'll be on hand to fill my shoes. It's not what Iger would want, but it is what would be best for the team. Hmm. Maybe we should talk to these guys once more before we leave. Yeah, I have nothing more to say, boss. Let's just get this run taken care of. You can hit me up again later if you want to talk. Aunt May, you should probably be getting ready for your trip to Das Castle House. Castle House. Time is short. Mm -hmm. I have a question about the Karl Kraus Bazaar. A little a slice of heaven, isn't it? What can I tell you about the our keys? Okay. Where can I sell pay data found on a run? Take the Shadowlands BBS on the mission computer. Monica, she used the bidding service there to sell valuable data. Okay, can you tell me about something about Kraus Bazaar? Okay, I asked about the people there. 
Samuel Beckenbauer is a good man, perhaps a bit xenophobic, but this is to be expected. He stands up for the rights of the goblinoid races, the orcs and the trolls, yes? They have been more vilified and victimized than any other meta-human breeds. What is important is that he is a leader and a healer, and that, and that he helps his people. In the soy calf shop you will find Jan Goldschmidt. I tell you that you will find him there because he never seems to leave the place. Every time I go for a coffee he's there sipping on soy calf. Beyond that, I cannot say what I think of the man. He's a jovial sack of fat. Perhaps if you speak with him, you can learn something more. Any more questions? Ask about the member of the team. If you have questions about your teammates, I'd recommend checking your mission computer. I know that Monica wrote dossiers for each of them. Uh, she'd be the best qualified to tell you about their capabilities anyway. Aunt May, what do you need? Any thoughts on what we should do next? Find our mission client, extract some answers. Beyond that, take jobs, get paid. Hey, are you holding up? If you say you're good, you're good. Glory's expression remains neutral, but she grants you a barely perceptible nod. Yeah, I think we're more or less ready. As ready as we're going to be, so... I could use car... No, 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 we don't have a goddamn dick. Um, I want the dick. I refuse to leave this place without the dick. How long does it take to get your information sold anyway? I could use some cash right about now. It has to be the Renraku Craftwork. Sunny is terrible. But if we too we can't buy all that many things in for it. I mean we're uh, buying it anyway. Killer level one. And what else? Maybe maybe medic? Can we sell? No, uh, frag grenade. No. I'd like to have another program, please. Um, shield. That's no good. I'll take the medic level one. And we have 45 credits after this, so yeah. Okay, I think we're ready to go. Take the U bomb to Rogan Kika. Could use more decking abilities, I suppose. But there's even no guarantee that there's any decking involved for some time. It was very erratic in the original game. In the sense that some, some contained a decent amount, but uh, there was a lot, other, a lot others that basically had nothing. 
Okay. At the sound of your approach, the orc turns to face you. He wears a severe expression, but is but there is kindness in his eyes. Ah, uh, hello, human. As you can see, I'm in the middle of conversation with my assistant. Volunteer worker holds her silence, but her expression is full of naked hostility. Hemel gives her a sidelong glance, and she seems to get the message. Fire in her eyes dies down to a low simmer. But we do not want to be polite. Is there something that I can do for you? I couldn't help overhearing your conversation. I take it that you run a charity of some sort. Yes, it isn't much, but we do what we can. But what? He clears his throat and begins to count off on his fingers. In the past several years I have established a shelter where the dispossessed can sleep, soup kitchen to help feed the hungry, the library for the people of the Kraus Bazaar to better themselves. It isn't much, I admit, but it's a start. A good start, Samuel. You mustn't be so hard on yourself. There are limits to what one man, even a determined man, can accomplish. Yeah, that is true. He nods to the orc at his side. Thankfully, some of the residents that I've helped over the years have come back around to help me. I've got 15 assorted orcs and trolls from all around the Kraus Bazaar working with me now. They help me man the soup lines, stock the library shelves, and do to do to all of the hundreds of other little things that a community organization needs, needs done every day. These extraordinary individuals are living proof that what we do here has value. They are my inspiration to continue forward. The volunteer beams at the compliment. From her body language, it's clear that she idolizes Beckenbauer. Now, do you have any more questions? If not, I will bid you good day. I don't wish to sound self-important or rude, but there are many pressing matters that demand my attention. Fifteen assorted orcs and trolls. Does that mean that other races aren't welcome within your organization? That's taking a rather nether view of what we do. Yes, it is true that my assistants are all members of the Galpenot races. It's also true that before they accepted my help, they were thieves, gangers, and deadbeats. This is not because they were bad people. This is because those of us with Goblinoid traits are feared, mistreated, and denied gainful employment by a society that hates us. I hire only Goblinoids because mainstream human society has created a need for me to hire only Goblinoids. The orcs and trolls of the Kraus Bazaar deserve a workplace where they will be treated with dignity and respect. All that being said, our services are available to all. We wouldn't turn a desperate person away, regardless of what that person's metatype. Even humans, the most privileged of all races, are welcome at our door. Then that the m what most isn't that what's most important? Okay. Uh. Ah, uh, it makes perfect sense to me. Very well, if you wish, what would you like to talk about? Organization? Of course, please go on. Uh, do you have policies? Yes, what we'd like to discuss. I think we're now. Hmm. Yep. Ah. Okay. Time to get on our first proper mission, I suppose. 